Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhouseonmoon.com and today I'm going to be making three make ahead fall meals, a little meal prep for autumn. Today I have three things that I want to make for just some make ahead meals. Every once in a while you get in those busy times of life where you want something that is easy to, and ready to go. Um, right now I do actually find myself in the kitchen more. I don't mind meal prepping in the morning, each morning, but there are some occasions when we just get really busy and we need something that's ready to go. One time will be whenever I go to have this baby, obviously. I plan to do a few more meal prep days before the baby actually comes, so a lot of this food won't make it that long, but that is on the horizon. Today I'm going to be making chili with some diced butternut squash. This is a beautiful addition. You can also use pumpkin. The kids don't even notice it. It adds nutrition. And also I bet you could probably find butternut squash for a really good price right now, like I was able to. A creamy chicken and wild rice soup. Now for a freezer version, I'm going to give you a few tips like leaving out the cream until later. More on that shortly. And I'm going to make an einkorn pie crust or a couple einkorn pie crust and freeze some chicken pot pies. These are great. You can make them all the way and bake them from frozen. So they are a true freezer meal. Now there's a couple different options with freezer meals. One is make it completely, freeze it, and you can pop it in the oven. My favorite way is usually just to do a bunch of prep and then freeze the component. So for example, chopping up a bunch of veggies and freezing them so that you have them ready to go really quick for any recipe, cooking protein, freezing it, and have all of these components so you can throw it together really quick, whether you wanna make some quick tacos or a soup, and all you have to do is just throw together the components that have been pre-prepped. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of both. Now I have compiled Make Ahead Freezer Meals into four steps. Now the first step, if you're gonna do like a big Make Ahead Meal Day like I'm doing today, is the day before plan what recipes you're going to make and shop make sure you have everything on hand now you can get away with making do with what you have like in today's chili recipe i didn't have any black beans this one didn't have any black beans i had a couple cans but for the most part i'm going to be using white beans for this the next step is to do some prep the day before so soak some grains soak some beans if you're going to be making up quantities of beans which i like to do even if i'm not making chili i like to prepare beans ahead of time that way i have the time to actually soak them and prepare them properly and get them in the freezer in some freezer bags also soaking grains so if you're gonna make an oatmeal bake you can soak the oatmeal in a little bit of water and yogurt so that it'll cook more quickly and it'll be more digestible. For the beans, I went ahead and added some lemon juice. This helps to also make them more digestible, break down the phytic acid in the beans. Another good step to do on the prep night is to get some bone broth going. Now I didn't do that, so I got bone broth going first thing this morning so that I can make the soupy things later in the day with my meal prep day. If you get it going the night before, all you have to do in the morning is strain it and then use it for your recipes. So soaking grains, making bone broth, or feeding your sourdough or whatever it is that you need to do for the next day to make the next day go a little bit more smoothly, I recommend doing that in step two. Step three is to cook the protein. So I like to brown ground beef, brown sausage, make a chicken or two. If you're doing a major meal prep day, I recommend having three or four chickens in the refrigerator so that they can thaw. Now you need a little bit more than just the night before. They don't thaw overnight a whole chicken in the refrigerator, but that's another thing you could do the night before is get your ground beef in the fridge, get your sausage in the fridge. Hopefully a few days before your big meal prep day, you've gotten a couple of chickens in the fridge. Now my favorite new way to make a chicken, which I've been wanting to try this for a while, and I just started doing it in the last couple weeks in my kitchen, and it's been amazing, is a spatchcock. So this is a new term to me, and it basically just means that on the underneath side of the chicken, you break it apart and you lay it flat, and it cooks a lot more evenly and a lot more quickly. So some of that inside meat that seems to take forever, and then the outside meat is all overdone at the point when the inside meat is done, that problem is completely eliminated. So essentially, you just do exactly like you would normally do with making a chicken, only you flatten it out, add some oil and salt, and then it does bake a lot more evenly. Great for a meal prep day, 
because then you can get it out, let it cool, and then pick the chicken and freeze it or put it straight into a dish, whatever it is you're planning to do. I wanted to share about today's video sponsor, Thrive Market. Thrive Market is an online grocery store where you can get all natural and organic grocery items. I personally like to use Thrive Market for some of those different items that I can't necessarily find at my local store. Today, for example, I got some organic chai tea. I found out that I actually get more tired when I drink caffeine in the afternoon. This is a new revelation for me. And so I really still like my drink in the afternoon, especially as the temps start to cool down a bit. And so I picked that up off of there. I also grabbed some organic panko breadcrumbs because I have an idea for a fried thing that I want to try and I just saw those on there and thought mm, let me try that and then I also like to get my supplements from there like my probiotics and iron olive oil einkorn flour salt and sometimes some different condiments that are just fun and things that I want to try fried market makes it easy for you to shop by your dietary preference whether you are gluten-free paleo, dairy-free. You can just filter by that so that it's really easy for you to shop. If you shop on there often, which I do because I've been a member for a really long time, it just will bring up a lot of your most recent purchases. It'll suggest things based on what you normally like. And so it just makes it really easy, fast shopping experience. Thrive Market does have two membership options. You can do month to month at $9.95 a month or the whole year, which makes it a little cheaper month to month at $59.95. Thrive Market is offering my viewers who are first time customers 25% off your first order plus a free gift with my link thrivemarket.com forward slash farmhouse on boon. It'll also be down in the description box below. Fourth step after cooking the protein is to chop veggies, shred cheese, chop tons of garlic. I like to have fresh garlic in just about everything. So if you're doing a big meal prep day, that is one of the advantages is you're going to be getting the garlic press dirty one time and mincing up if you're like me at least two or three heads of garlic so that you can put it into all of your dishes without having to get out the garlic press like four times this would also be a good time especially in the fall to peel and chop up several butternut squash we picked up a bunch recently at a local Mennonite community. They were $10 for a huge box, and I like to add them to everything, but usually the problem with butternut squash is if you're in a hurry, they just take a while. You have to peel them, scoop out the seeds, chop them all up really finely. The more fine, the better as far as like getting kids to not worry about them being in there. So it's a great time to do it on a meal prep day and put them in a Ziploc bag and freeze them so that you just have diced butternut squash ready to go. They even sell it like this at the grocery store. So you could of course just go that route too, buy them in bulk, but if you do find a good price right now, while it's seasonally available, I would recommend doing that prep on meal prep day. Step five is ferment, freeze, or can. So like in today's example, I'm going to make up a batch of sauerkraut. This will be on hand to serve with any of these meals or any other meals for the next month or so. And then my sixth step or tip, if you will, is to keep fresh things on hand to complement all of the meals that you're making. So diced avocado, sauerkraut, sour cream, having it all stocked so that you could always add an element of freshness, even if you're taking a frozen meal out of the freezer and just baking it, you can add something that's really fresh, maybe some greens, fresh herbs, something like that. For today's chili, I didn't follow a recipe with chili and more normally just use whatever I have on hand. Now I do have a specific recipe over on the Farmhouse on Boom blog if you want a little bit more direction, but I added diced onions to a bunch of browned ground beef. I chopped and sauteed in some coconut oil, butternut squash, and garlic. a whole bunch of random canned tomatoes. Canned tomatoes are something that I like to keep a lot of. So like the other day at the store, there was just a clearance rack of these fire roasted tomatoes, which I love. They also do have them on Thrive Market. I used them last year in my chili, so I bought every last one of them. And so I had some to pull from. I added a couple of cans of black beans. Like I said earlier, I went into the pantry last night to soak some beans for this meal prep day. 
I was all out of black beans and then even the store was out of black beans. So I did have a lot of white beans. I got those soaking last night, cooked them today and then just added those to the chili along with two cans of black beans. Then I added my sauteed squash and garlic to the pot along with chili powder, cumin, salt, garlic powder, tasted it a little bit and it tasted delicious. Now we took a break for lunch and I didn't even have the white beans completely done at that point and we just ate what was done of the chili. I usually, to make chili go a little bit further, enjoy adding some einkorn fusilli pasta. And so we made up a box of that, layered it with what was done of the chili today, shredded cheddar cheese, diced avocado, and everyone loved it and cleaned their plates. And then I went back to a little bit more meal prep. For the creamy chicken and wild rice soup, I chopped up a whole bunch of carrots, celery, and onions, and added that to my cast iron Dutch oven, along with some butter, and just sauteed them until they were tender. I added salt, pepper, about a half a cup of wild rice. Now, of course, more depending on how much you're making. And then some of my homemade chicken stock, I still have fresh rosemary and thyme in the garden, so I also added some of that. You could also use dried. Don't forget to store away the bones from your chicken in the Ziploc. I'll just collect several chicken worth in order to make bone broth later. And then I just allowed the soup to simmer for about 20 minutes. Next, I added in chicken from the chicken that I cooked earlier. And this is the point at which you can freeze this. Now, later on, whenever it's time to serve, I recommend adding a roux. So to make a roux, you just mix up about equal parts of flour and butter in a skillet or a saucepan, something where you can melt the butter and combine the flour and the butter. Stir that into the soup to thicken it and then thin it down with a whole bunch of cream or milk. The creamier, the better, but if you have more milk or half and half than you do cream, you can add that as well. I like to freeze it prior to the cream adding step. That way it, it just seems to freeze a little bit better. Now, what I recommend if you are wanting to stock your freezer with meals like this, is to put instructions on it. So put them in either a Ziploc bag once it's cool or something that is freezer safe. And then with a little Sharpie marker or something, write on add roux plus cream. Now you can totally leave the roux out. If you wanna keep this really simple, just put add cream or add you know two cups of cream. You can refer to the Farmhouse on Boone blog for this recipe. That way, if you wanna double or triple, you can just look at the amounts and you can make a note to yourself to add however much cream that you see fit. Now, if you're like me, you'll just write add cream and then later on you can just add as much or as little as looks good to you. I always do a little bit of tasting, a little bit more salt, a little bit more cream, a little taste and then, you know, go from there. You don't need anything specific. Okay, and for the chicken pot pies, I made my chicken pot pie filling, which again, you can find on the Farmhouse on Boone blog. I will link all of this down in the description box below. I made up a double batch of my Einkorn chicken pot pie crust recipe. And then I just divided it into four equal parts, rolled out the bottom dough and put that into a pie dish. Now, 
Ordinarily, I would use glass, but since I am freezing these, I used just like a metal cake pan. You could use anything that won't break whenever you go to put this frozen straight into the oven. Filled it in, added a top pie crust, wrapped it with foil, and once it was nice and cool, put it into the freezer unbaked. Now, whenever I want to bake these, I will place it on a baking sheet in a 350 degree oven for about an hour. Now, it is best to cover the outsides of the crust with a little bit of foil so that they don't burn as the inside is baking for the first half of the baking time. And then you can remove it and allow it to brown the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. 